Good morning. Good morning. On behalf of the family, let me welcome each one of you to the service celebrating the life of Vera Lee English. My name is Josh Hayes. On behalf of the family, I want to welcome you. I am associate pastor of First Baptist Church of Waco, where Vera was a member for many, many years. And so for the past seven of those, I've had the privilege to be one of her pastors. And today it is uh, my somber joy to serve her one final time. Would you bow with me? Lord Jesus, we come together with heavy hearts today, but also with grateful hearts. Lord, we give you thanks for Vera's life. We give you thanks for the legacy that she has left behind. We give you thanks for her continuing life with you and for the promise of the gospel that that, that life awaits all who put their faith and trust in you, Lord Jesus. In that promise and in that hope, we gather together as an offering of worship to you, God, thanksgiving for Vera's life and, and thanksgiving for your grace and love toward us. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Vera was born in Nacogdoches, Texas, to Curtis J. Swink and Allie Mae Swink, was one of seven siblings. Vera married Roy L. English, and they had two children. Vera and Roy moved to Waco in the late 70s and established R&R Compressor Incorporated. They ran the company together until Roy's passing in 2002. After establishing their business, Vera decided to seek a degree in accounting. She became a proud Baylor graduate, part of the class of 87. Vera participated in several local civic organizations, including Altrusa. Both Vera and Roy were longtime members of First Baptist Church of Waco. Vera was preceded in death by her parents, her husband, Roy L. English, her sisters, Rose Mary Sandlin, and Mary Mimi Crump and her brother, Dr. James Swink. She is survived by her son, Billy Roy English, her daughter, Mary Vanessa Cleveland, her grandchildren, Cody L. Cleveland and wife, Cecilia, Elizabeth English, Lauren English Thurman and husband, John, Sarah English Coleman and husband, Kevin, her great-grandchildren, Hannah Olson, Addison Reeves, Cammie Mae Cleveland, Colt Cleveland, Trace Thurman, Tatum Thurman, Chris Lee Coleman, and Kane Coleman. Her sisters, Willeen Shuptrine and Ann Phillips, and her brother, Joe Swink. 
She will be deeply missed by all who knew her. We'll continue in song once more. As you all well know, Vera English was many, many things. Through her 90 years, she got to wear a lot of hats in life and wore them well. She was an adoring wife to Roy, devoted mother to Billy and Mary, joyful grandmother to Cody, Elizabeth, Lauren, and Sarah, even a great-grandmother of eight. She loved each one of you so dearly. She was also a successful businesswoman, active community volunteer, faithful church member at First Baptist Waco. But by training and by trade, Vera was an accountant. I don't know a whole lot about accounting. I, was, I studied religion and minored in history, so I only ventured into the business building to go to the nice vending machines. <laughs> <laughs> but as I understand it, at its heart, Accounting is the discipline of determining value. It's the practice of recognizing assets on one hand and liabilities on the other, and making choices to prioritize those things rightly, following through on those decisions faithfully. Well, Vera undertook that responsibility with wisdom and excellence, not just in her professional life, but, but personally as well. See, Vera recognized that the Lord had given her a great many gifts, a great many assets, and she worked through her life to steward them faithfully. Because of that, she valued and she invested in her family, in her education, in her community, and in her Savior. Vera valued her family all the days of her life. She was the the matriarch that united together multiple generations of this family. Cody, you told me last week that your grandma was the backbone of the family, and boy, she certainly was. Certainly was that. I can't get out of my head what you said right after that. It's been playing in my mind all through this week, almost this kind of throwaway line. You said, 
She's the backbone of the family. I, I guess every grandma is. Vera lived into that backbone role so fully. Cody and I imagine the rest of you as well just couldn't imagine family any other way. She did it so faithfully, so effortlessly that it, it was almost taken for granted. Let me tell you, as a pastor, I, I get a window into the lives of an awful lot of families and not every grandma is a backbone to the family. Now, thank God, many of them are, and, and Vera certainly was. She was one of the finest. That was a gift. Her love lent the family structure and stability in the good seasons and the tough ones, times of tears and times of rejoicing. She continues to impart that, that strength, even today, even in this hour. Vera wanted her family close by. She and Roy would invite the grandchildren to come up, spend summers with them here in Waco. That time was a gift of love to her grandchildren. I can also tell you as, uh, as the dad of a very energetic four-year-old and an extremely teething six-month-old, it, it was a gift of love to that middle generation too. <laughs> See some nods and a thumbs up here. Uh, that was a gift of love and mercy and grace and Vera, Vera did it joyfully. During those summers together, Vera and Roy shared love and life and fun and faith with those grandkids in ways that are gonna mark their lives forever. Vera became the backbone of the family over those long summer days. She occupied that role right until the Lord called her home. Vera also valued education. She charted her own path toward higher education like she did with so many other things in her life. Vera became a Baylor Bear, not as a freshly minted high school graduate. No, she went back to school as a, an established professional woman in her 50s. Returning to seek a degree as a non-traditional student like that must have taken courage. It also paid dividends, and, and not just for Vera. See, she brought with her those experiences and perspective from both the workplace and the home back into the classroom in ways that enriched her fellow students. I imagine she kept some professors on their toes, too. Of course, I was not in class with Vera, but... Uh, I was in seminary with my classmate, Daryl. Daryl and I met on the first day of student orientation. I, I quickly realized Daryl was about 50 years my senior. He was coming back to seminary after a career of selling appliances right up into his 70s. They came back to school because he felt like he had a lot he still wanted to learn about Jesus, about the scriptures. Along our next few years together, he taught me just as much as he learned and, and then some. See, every so often, some of, us, uh, some of us students in our 20s were just convinced we had the whole world figured out. We were convinced everybody else around us uh, needed to learn from our wisdom, so we'd, we'd sort of clear our throat, we'd, we'd puff up our chest, we'd, we'd start to make some declarative statement about the way things are or the way things ought to be. This happened in most classes, but in the ones with Daryl in it, those professors could just sort of step back from the lectern a little bit. They wouldn't say a word, but they'd just turn and look over to Daryl. He could gently correct us, or, or sometimes he'd just sort of gaze down at his notebook and kind of shake his head a little bit. He corrected us and, and taught us with such grace and such love, and, and we took that correction with gratitude most of the time because Daryl was demonstrating just by showing up that he knew he had a lot left to learn, too. He didn't scold us as a superior. He came along and, and gave us a gentle nudge as our friend. I suspect that Vera did just the same thing in those hand camera classrooms. Students, a generation younger than she was, and she was happy to learn right alongside and teach them as well. Vera valued education for herself and, and education for others. That compassion for others also led Vera to value her community give back to it at every opportunity. You don't have to take my word for it if you, if you don't know already, as I'm sure you do. Just take a look at the counter as you walk out today. You'll see the awards and recognitions lined up from, from all the ways that she served Waco. 
She gave herself to a number of different service organizations. Chief among them was Altrusa. It just makes sense that a woman who valued education the way that Vera did would, would partner with an organization and serve promoting literacy. She wanted Waco's children to have access to the same kind of gifts that she had enjoyed and that she had worked to secure for her own kids and grandkids. Vera English counted family and education and community all as assets in her life. But she also had some liabilities, as all of us do. None of us get through this life with a totally pristine balance sheet. None of us can reconcile those books on our own. Thankfully, God has a debt forgiveness program unlike any other. Here's how the Bible describes it in Colossians 2, verses 13 and 14. When you were dead in your sins and the uncircumcision of your flesh, God made you alive with Christ. He forgave us all our sins, having canceled the charge of our legal indebtedness, which stood against us and condemned us. He has taken it away, nailing it to the cross. Even Vera, beloved Vera, backbone of her family, servant of her community, she carried a debt of sin that she could never repay all by herself. Even a woman with her strength couldn't deal with this one on her own. That liability stood against her, condemned her, and left her bankrupt of spirit until she called out to Jesus to take it away. As the perfect son of God, Jesus shouldered that debt, carried it to the cross, left it there, never to return. Jesus triumphed there, bought Vera's freedom, along the way bought her a very abundant life as well. Just as Jesus overcame the cross, so too he overcame the grave, and in his triumph we can rejoice even as we grieve today. It's all right to be sad today, saying farewell to a woman as lovely as Vera, how could we be anything but? On the eve of his own journey to the cross, Jesus comforted his disciples. He told them, don't let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. He told them, my father's house has many rooms. If it weren't so, would I have told you that I'm going to prepare a place for you? If I go and prepare a place for you, I'll come back and take you to be with me that you also may be where I am. Jesus has called Vera to that place even now. She's living a full and abundant life that we can only imagine. But by faith, we can also join her there one day. Jesus prepared a room for Vera. She's getting all settled in now, getting, getting her things arranged in all the drawers. He's prepared a room for you there as well. What about the meantime? You still got this afternoon and tomorrow and Monday and Tuesday to deal with. How are we going to move forward in the absence of a woman who meant so much to each one of us? Well, one day at a time, one breath at a time. I suspect that as an accountant, Vera might want to remind us of one final passage of Scripture. This one comes from Romans 13, verse 8. Let no debt remain outstanding except the continuing debt to love one another. For whoever loves others has fulfilled the law. Vera loved each one of you because Christ had first loved her. She loves you still, even in her absence. Just as you love Vera, continue to love one another. As you assume that debt of love to one another, you honor Vera's memory, you honor Vera's Lord, and you honor her hope in the gospel that promises we can all unite together again. Would you bow with me? Lord, we rejoice once again in the promise of the gospel. God, the promise that you have gone to prepare a place for us, and at just the right moment, you will call us there. Lord, we thank you that you have called Vera to you after 90 full and well-lived years. 
God, we thank you that she is healthy and whole and in your presence. God, we pray that as we miss her, you would bring us the comfort of your Holy Spirit. God, we pray that we would learn from her life and example, God. Would we be people of love and hospitality to one another? God, would we shoulder that debt to love one another, that we might be backbones of our own family, of our own community? Lord, we thank you that for the life that Vera lived here among us. We thank you for the life that she lives even now. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Once again, let me thank you for your presence today. As we dismiss, i uh, also like to extend an invitation to you. Uh, the family has reserved a room at La Fiesta at 1 o'clock. If you're available for lunch, uh, they would be honored if you would join them there. Uh, share stories, continue to remember, and to reflect and rejoice together. Thank you once again for your time. Go in peace. Thank you.